<clears throat> yes, I do have a question with regards to um, the rental assistance. Are these repeat, um, I guess, customers that you all are, or, or repeat uh, residents that are requesting funding? Uh, and, and those families that you are assisting, how do we help them become more sustainable? Because we can continue to give money to assist, but what other structures or other things that are in place that will help these families become sustainable? Because I can help you with your rent this month, but then what are you going to do for the next 11 months? You know. You know. We will. Um, one of the things that I mentioned was the employment training. I find it, honestly, I find it difficult to manage grown people. You know that you have rent that is due. You know that you have mortgage that is due. People don't know what they don't know. And what we're finding, some people may not know that they actually need to pay that bill before they go out and buy shoes. So we can offer the credit counseling and we do counsel. We have case managers that are assigned to these individuals. We have case managers that will set goals with these individuals. I will tell you, it, it works to a degree, but we can't make people do. We can offer these employment classes and training. We can offer the short term credentials, but if they refuse to come, we don't know what else to do behind that. We've had some people, of course, to abuse it. And as he mentioned, on the very front page, when you first go into Charity Tracker, it will have a beware of this client because we do know that they go from place to place. Honestly, we've received calls for assistance, and I've stated this before, from Henry County government employees, from Henry County school system employees, from any one of these manufacturing companies here in Henry County. We have received calls from these individuals. 20-245 authorizing an amendment which changes the allocation of funds and approving additional funds of transfer in order to further assist nonprofits due to COVID. Title V of CARES Act created the Coronavirus Fund to provide financial resources to state and local governments. The U.S. Treasury provided Georgia with approximately $4.1 billion based on funding formula and determined 45% could be allocated to local governments on a criteria of public health emergency, and Henry County would be eligible for $8.4 million. On August 11th, 2020, the Board of Commissioners voted 5-1 to 1 to authorize acceptance of the funds in the amount of $8,457,973. The county allocated and distributed 80% of those funds for small businesses and nonprofits to assist the residents of Henry County that were impacted by COVID-19. During the closeout process beginning September 2022, it was projected and now confirmed that a balance of funds in the amount of $779,489 will, will remain. Financial services requesting the Board of Commissioners authorize a change to reallocate the funds and to provide to nonprofits to assist the residents of Henry County that are still being affected by COVID-19. When we had our cold weather event on the weekend of Christmas, how many nonprofits stepped forward to help us open up the warming shelters? Did you say how many? Or how many nonprofits stepped forward to help us open up warming shelters? Can you ask that? So Connect and Henry wasn't involved in none of the shelters at all? No, sir. Okay. So can I get a motion from the board to move um, the funding from the business side to the nonprofit side. Um, I do have one question. When, when will the um, um, I guess the uh, um, no for whatever go go out for the nonprofits to be able to apply for the funding? Okay. Um, Next item on the agenda is Parks and Rec. <clears throat> Resolution requesting approval of awarding RFP 23-02 to Perez Planning and Design LLC for Henry County Parks and Recreation Comprehensive Master Plan. And then, 
amount of $265,500. Good evening, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, Commissioners, Henry County residents. Today you have before you a resolution requesting approval of awarding RFP 2302 prepares planning for the Henry County Parks and Recreation Comprehensive Master Plan in the amount of $265,500. One, one reason is this right here is the last time Henry County had a comprehensive master plan for parks and recreation, which is 1974. Any questions? Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? Commissioner Thomas. Uh, Mr. Penn, go back to some of your points of what it is you're trying to accomplish here now. Yes. What are you trying to accomplish with your plan? So to provide a comprehensive overview of the plan, a needs analysis for the, all the communities within Henry County, um, our gaps, um, where, where land that we need to purchase for future growth, um, buildings that we need to purchase, what we need to do to our current facilities to bring them up to standard, to all the national levels of standard and prioritization of our capital projects. I hate to sound redundant by asking the same question, but I guess I'm trying to see again, what is it that you really want to accomplish with this? It's a complete plan. Once it's completed, we'll bring it back for adoption so that we can implement what's in that plan. So this company is writing it so they can also implement the plan as well? No, we'll do the implementation, but they're going to provide the steps that we need to take to implement this plan. So what concerns me, <clears throat> we're going to spend $265,000 for a plan. They're going to implement it, or we'll have to implement it if it approves. How are we going to pay for what they recommend? Where does that funding come from? If we pay for that study to be done, that plan to be approved, and they recommend that we have to spend $20 million to upgrade our parks, Where's that money coming from? So that's the conversation that we would have to have on how we strategize. In the plan, there will be recommendations on how we go about that, but we as a county have to come up with, you know, that funding. And you all will have to approve where that funding will come from. So the problem I would have with this, approving the 265, then you come back and need all this funding to follow the plan, and then it may it may cause a, a millage rate increase, or we may have to bond money. I wouldn't want to do that for the taxpayers when we have other needs for these type these type monies. And then the next item on the agenda is a resolution approving the purchase of a sprung structure in the amount of four point two million dollars. It's for emergency housing in the Henry County Jail. We are currently looking at the sprung facility to be able to cover these issues. As we see on the board today that this is now moved to a, a 4.2 uh, dollar factor. This is including our sprung materials, the design and build, the contingency amount, security camera installation, and housing supplies. By looking at the drawings and the pictures, it don't seem to be stable. It looks like a, a tent. Is that... I'm just I will going by the drawings. It looks like a yes, sir. it looks like a sophisticated tent. So it looks like to me. Yeah, good evening, sir. Uh, thank you, and I appreciate the question. It is an exterior tension membrane structure. So basically, what it consists of is an aluminum I-beam substructure with an approved fabric membrane on the exterior, a tensioned fabric. So when you say tent, yeah, it's similar to a tent. You think of a tent because it's a fabric. So we had winds like we did the other night, but I don't think this thing would hold up to those type winds, would they? None in the metro area. None in the metro area, no sir. Okay. We do have one location at Hancock State Prison in Sparta, Georgia, but not in the metro area. All right, thank you. Commissioner Thomas? Well, I've heard this before and I have echoed some of my concerns. What do you do with these spruces when you don't need them anymore? Or they don't meet the need? What are you all doing with them? 
Well, it is a relocatable building, so you could completely transform it to a, a different application. It could be uh, used for a warehouse or move it to another site and use for whatever the county may need if it no longer has use for an inmate facility. Because the sheriff is responsible for the jail. And so he has his own maintenance team. I know that Hutch and his team will assist if they're called upon, um, but it is my understanding that there are staff members that are under the sheriff and report to him for all maintenance needs. So the request before you all this evening for the sprung structure, the request is for the 4.2 million to come out of the county's fund balance. Okay. So our fund balance dollars, um, if approved, would be out of our general fund budget. To build the structure, they're saying anywhere between six weeks and six months to build this temporary structure. Uh, with regards to ARPA, I don't think you can utilize it for that. Uh, Sherry, can we utilize it? No, ma'am. So this would be a capital expense, and the ARPA funding I think that she's referring to is the previous item. Right. Um, so this would strictly be out of our fund balance, 100% funded out of fund balance. Where does this fall, you know the question that's coming, on the plan of buildings that we need? Because it's not just the jail that is desperate for a building. There's a lot of county needs. And how does that fall on our plan for structures? And this would fall on capital, under, on, under a capital improvement plan. <clears throat> I mean, we're in need of a fire training facility. We're in need of a, 9 1, a new 911 center because uh, we were hoping that they didn't get blown away during the tornado, the metal structure over there. Um, well, we're in need of a whole lot of things. And that's why having plans in place so you, we can figure out how we're going to uh, prioritize um, makes a difference. And so... Um, um, I will not sit here and say that this is not a priority for the sheriff, but I can tell you all the priorities that every other department has. And what we're doing is we're trying to make sure that the lights stay on, we don't have leaky roofs, and we don't have issues where p individuals are coming in and there's no heating and air. If this board will remember, last week I sent you all an email where we had to shut down a senior center because there was no heat. In everything that we do is a priority. And that's one of the reasons you'll see me push back on things that may be a won't, versus what really are needs. I just can't, for the life of me, pull from the fund balance that we've worked so hard to get that gives our county our financial strength to pull from fund balance. If there's somewhere else that we can find the funds to come from, I think that's where we've got to look. So thank you, Sherry. Thank you all to y'all being here and everything that y'all do. But with respect to my specific area, uh, the perpetual quagmire is that we're sitting on, after the audit that we just finished, uh, over 7,000 warrants. Uh, we postponed the initial uh, task force that we wanted to do uh, countywide and metro Atlanta-wide based on some of those 7,100 warrants. That warrant task force is going forth in February. Uh, we cannot stop that or hold that back uh, any longer. And so I understand the concerns with respects from the fiscal uh, overall fiscal concerns with the county, I certainly understand that, uh, but I just want to make sure that I specify uh, louder that we're going to be in a very tight situation relative to no more space for inmates. Because if you have 7,100 warrants and you bring in 10 percent, you had 710 people, well us spending four million dollars for 100 spaces won't help you. That's correct. Because again, if you bring in 5 percent, that spruce still won't help you. I'm trying to see how that would help you, even if you bring in, well, you got to bring in 1%, I guess, and the spruce will help you. <laughs> but I'm not being funny about it. It's just that if you bring in 5% or 10% on those outstanding marks, this thing will not be really of a, a service to you. All right. Um, I'll call for a motion. I'd like to make a motion to have um, this table for tonight because I don't want them to appear that we don't want to address it. All right, so we got a motion on the floor of the table. 
Is there a second? I second the table. Okay, I got a motion on the floor to table, a second. Um, everyone in favor of tabling it? Okay, so it's already been motioned. It's, it's, it was motioned by Commissioner Thomas. It had been second by Commissioner Lewis. Are you voting in favor to table? I vote in favor to table. Okay, so all those in favor to table. Motion carries. Okay. I'd like to put a motion on the floor that this comes back before the Board of Commissioners when we are going to prioritize and put some type of strategic plan together as to needs and funding. Um, I forgot the date of the retreat. March. Yes, and I'm sorry, just point of order. A motion has already been made. Y'all have taken action on it. So if Commissioner Thomas wants to rescind her um, approval, then she can enter a new motion. But y'all have already taken action on this item. Oh, I can't have another motion <laughs> no, to bring it back. Because no, you've the already motioned no. to table. Okay. Now, if you'd like, you can ask Chair Harrell to open it back up for you to rescind your motion, and then Commissioner Lewis rescind his second, and then put another motion on the floor. But I don't think we can 